I do wonder, though, why they give you that big of a bar, and yet it never goes past that point. Oh, wait, actually, I think I do know. I think it actually has to do with the fact that I went ahead and chose Extreme Difficulty. It gives you less of a stamina bar. That's what it was. I remember reading about that now. If we can get a better camera angle, that'd be nice. That purple bar actually shows how much energy, uh, how much time it's going to take you to get back up. So, at least we got to demonstrate that. Okay, note to self, the flamethrower is not all that impressive. It looks nice, but... Yeah. Could just be that I was playing Extreme Difficulty. And so, welcome back to Brookhaven Hospital, where they decided to cram most of the puzzles in this game. And so, it's time for perhaps one of the most disturbing puzzles in all of Silent Hill history, and that's saying something. Time for the hard mode Brookhaven keypad puzzle. This time it's a bit wordy. There's a typewritten memo posted here. What's this supposed to mean? Pure eyes, blue like a glassy bead. You are always looking at me, and I am always looking at you. Ah, you're too meek, beautiful, unspoiled. Thus I'm so sad I suffer, and so happy it hurts. I want to hurt you, and destroy myself. What you would think if you knew how I felt? Would you simply smile, not saying a word? Even curses from your mouth would be as beautiful as pearls. I place my left hand on your face as though we were to kiss. Then I suddenly shove my thumb deep into your eye socket, abruptly, decisively, like drilling a hole. And what would it feel like? Like jelly? Trembling with ecstasy, I obscenely mix it around and around. I must taste the warmth of your blood. How would you scream? Would you shriek, it hurts, it hurts, as cinnabar red tears stream from your crushed eye? You can't know the maddening hunger I've felt in the midst of our kisses, so many of them I've lost count. As though drinking in your cries, I bring my hopes to fruition, biting your tongue, shredding it, biting at your lips as if tasting your lipstick. Oh, what euphoric heights I would reach, having my desires fulfilled like a greedy, gluttonous cur. I longed, too, for your cherry-tinted cheeks, tasty enough to bewitch my tongue. I would surely be healed and would cry like a child. And how is your tender ear? It brushes against my cheek. I want it to creep up to my lips so I can sink my teeth into its flesh. Your left ear, always hearing words whispered sweet as pie. I want it to hear my true feelings. I never lied, no, but I did have my secrets. Ah, but what must you think of me? Do you hate me? Are you afraid? As though inviting you to the agony at the play's end, if you wish, you could destroy me. I wouldn't care. As you wish, you may destroy me. I wouldn't care. It's believed this wonderful poem was written by our good friend Stanley Coleman, just another rather disturbing entry in his little tale. However, he's given us the key. We just have to really think about it. The poem is written from the point of view of, supposedly, Stanley talking to Heather. He is looking at us, we are looking at him. And Heather's face is thus represented by the keypad. Each of the buttons represents part of the face. So as we look over the contents of the poem, five different distinct motions are made. Poking the eye, drinking the bloody tears, biting the tongue, tasting the cheek, and biting the ear. This gives us five potential buttons. So we have to play a little game of one of these things does not belong. Poking, drinking, biting, tasting, eating. Thus, we have our theme. Today's secret word is cannibalism. Lovely! So, looking at the different things that were mentioned. First, 
he poked Heather's eye with his left hand, which thus would be Heather's right eye, which would be represented by the one. But since that was just a poke, we're not concerned with that. But he did mention drinking her tears. It can be assumed that the tears dripped down to the key below. Thus the first number is four. Next, he bites Heather's tongue. That would be the mouth. Eight. Then he mentions tasting her cheek. Only problem, we're not quite sure which one. This is a 50-50 guess. It's always the same code, though, so you get it quickly through process of elimination. It would either be 7 or 9 where the cheeks are located. They want 9. Finally, he mentions biting her left ear, which he whispers into. The left ear would be 6. Thus, four, eight, nine, six, and it's unlocked. Disturbing, that. The next puzzle is close to here, so let's go ahead and take care of that one. More ducker! Okay. So the next puzzle is in room M4. Time for the hard mode version of my start time is the key. So looking at what we have here, it looks like our time is 7.44. And yet, the case remains locked. This is kind of a jerk move on their part, because there's not really any clue to this that I know of in the game itself. However, you have to put the time in as military time and assume it's afternoon. So basically, once you have your time written out, add 12 to the hours digit. And we get the instant camera. I really don't know if there's any actual clue that that's what you're supposed to do, or if you're just supposed to randomly guess that. If anyone knows if there's anything that directly points to having to use military time, do let me know. Because really, it doesn't seem like there's anything. You know, they could have put some dog tags around or something. Something with a military theme. Even the note about the patient in the examination room doesn't seem to say anything about it. Kind of weird and random, that. All right, everyone, gather around. It's story time down at the cremation morgue. Yes, this is perhaps the wordiest puzzle in the game. Time to read quite a bit. There's a memo here. Let's see. Who killed Cock Robin? The Sparrow, they said. He wants them all dead. To him, honey sweet is their sobbin. The Owl, who forgot the sky, resigned to his poor earthbound state. Hungry or full didn't matter at all. He ate, and he ate, and he ate. The grass the thrush so loved to eat gave him sweet happiness. He sank ever deeper and finally fell to destruction and fatal distress. Cock Robin, who hid the key away, is ash in the oven, all right. The place he held is empty now, and the doors remain shut tight. The lark's child lost all his words and walled himself up all away. Heart and mouth both locked up tight, in a cage where none want to stay.
The dove's hope died. He chose his path. His flapping wings fell still. Drenched in scarlet, here they lay, his cheeks pale white and chill. There it is. He seeks out her soul by his own black ambition, frightening her out of her wits, whispering love songs into her ear. What cruel linnet wants, he gets. The black rook is the praying sort, who hears the gods in the skies. His whispered petitions go on without end, and glassy and dim are his eyes. The wren, with pure heart as yet unrefined, makes us laugh with his feeble lip smacking, but still we all know he shall never grow old, and he knows not how much he is lacking. And finally, the kite, hot, crazy, and panting mad, sweet shackles that tease and excite, death itself would drive him wild, red blood that turns milky white. So each of the bodies here represents a different bird. And then we have this on the oven. What it wants us to do is select four birds for the lock combination, and give the numbers that they were represented on by the different corpses. Burn the one who knows no death, pure, adored by those above, no prayers within, just simple love. This one refers to the wren, number nine. It was said that he'll never grow old, and that he was pure-hearted. And now the pining hunter, the flames longing for his rebirth, a distant breath within the earth. This one refers to number two, the owl. Both the owl's poem and this refer to the earth, and how he was earth-bound, couldn't fly any more, and how he hunted constantly, eating and eating and eating. Burn up that heavy body of his, make it wind dancing in the sky, that bottomless gut now a cloud, now a sigh. Hope you have a good working knowledge of birds, because there is no real clear indication of what this one corresponds to. This one, believe it or not, is number seven, the linnet, which only seemed more to call to Stanley Coleman constantly harassing Heather, basically, and that was about all his poem talked about. This does, however, mention a sigh, and corpse number seven being Stanley, of course, sighs as Heather draws near. However, this line about the heavy body of his, and the bottomless gut, that refers to an actual linnet. The linnet apparently is a bird that eats many times its own body weight, so that's, I guess, what they're going for with this one. Thankfully, it's the only one of the four that's this unclear, so you can kind of process of elimination this one. Anyway, the fourth number. The sweet blood on his laughing lips now calls him to the gates of hell. There burns evermore that soulless shell. They're obviously seeking a murderer here, and the best indication would be number one, the sparrow, the one who killed Cock Robin, who apparently hid the key in the oven, and apparently, according to his poem, wants us all dead. Four bodies return to ashes. Thus the door is opened. Thus the door is opened. So, bearing all this in mind, the combination is 9 for the wren, 2 for the owl, 7 for that accursedly vague linnet, and 1 for the sparrow. And thus the door is opened, and we get the cremated key. Pretty long way to go for that one. It's always the birds, man. Always the birds.